Boys and girls, welcome to Kids Hafa. Say hello to my little friend Thomasina. She and I are presenting Kids Hafa together. Hey Thomasina, do you understand the meaning of the word doubt? It is the feeling you get when you feel uncertain or unsure, when you feel you just can't trust something will happen. Or you can't believe something even if someone tells you? When we aren't sure we can believe something, we are doubtful. It doesn't feel good not to be able to trust something or someone. Sometimes we may even feel doubtful about God. Oh, now I get it. I do have doubts sometimes. Could you explain what happened, Thomasina? Well, I just started school in a new class, but I doubt if the other kids like me. Oh, oh, and the other day, our teacher gave us a pop quiz in math, but I doubt I'll get a good grade. And my mommy says that I have to go to the dentist because I have shaking teeth. But I doubt if I can sit with mommy on the dentist chair, so I doubt I can be brave. I, I think I'll get scared and start to cry. And can I tell you a secret? I sometimes doubt if Jesus really listens to my prayers. Is that a bad thing? Oh no, Thomasina. Don't think it's bad. Our doubt doesn't scare God. He knows what we think and why we think it. He understands our doubts. He wants us to trust Him. I think today's lesson is just what you need. As you know, the best place to find the right answer to any question is in the Holy Bible. So let's see what Jesus did when someone who was like one of his bestest friends had doubtful feelings. Stories of the Bible Jesus appears to Thomas. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen. He was alive. What? Hey -o. Jesus appeared to his disciples to show them that he was alive. 
one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. Hey, hey Thomas! Later, the disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Oh, hey guys. Peace be with you, he said. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas said, my Lord, and my God. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Did you see what happened in that story from the Bible, Thomasina? Yes, yes. There was a man who had a name just like mine. Yes, besides that, did you see and listen to what happened in the story? Yeah, yeah, I did. Jesus appeared to some of his disciples after his death, meaning he had risen from the grave just as he had promised. He showed his disciples who were there evidence to prove that he was alive by showing the scars he had in his hands and his side and his feet. One of the disciples was not there at the time Jesus appeared. His name was Thomas and he was quite a brave person. And he always seemed to be asking a lot of questions. When the other disciples told him that Jesus had risen from death and that Jesus had visited them, Thomas did not believe it and he said he won't believe it until he sees Jesus for himself. Thomas was someone who had doubtful feelings most of the time. Although he had traveled with Jesus for three years and learned from his teaching, Thomas needed time, evidence, and personal convincing before he would accept the resurrection of Jesus. C can I tell you the best part in the story? Sure. When Jesus appeared again, a few days later, Jesus knew Thomas needed to make the doubtful feelings in his heart go away. Jesus asked Thomas to touch the scars in his hands and side, which Thomas did. And this helped Thomas to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead as he promised. And the best part is, Jesus did not get angry with Thomas for wanting to be certain. That makes me feel so much better because I always thought that God would be angry with me if he knew that I had doubts about him really listening to my prayers. I'm so glad you understood, Thomasina. Our God is a God who loves us so much and whenever we have doubts, Jesus will help us just as he helped Thomas. Everyone who has doubtful feelings can speak to God about the things that are bothering them. He wants to hear our arguments and our questions. Let's watch what Douglas says about asking questions and even about Thomas. Hey guys, it's me, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about asking questions about God. Having questions about God that you haven't been able to find the answer to. And it's really tricky because it, it sometimes it feels wrong to have questions. And so what if you have doubts? What if you have questions? What if you see things or learn about things that make you wonder? Is that wrong? Well, I think, I think that it's okay to have questions. I do. I think it's actually a very good thing to have questions. You know, in Proverbs, it talks a whole bunch about seeking after wisdom, trying to find wisdom, looking for truth. And I think it's hard to look for truth without having questions, right? I do think it's okay to have questions, and I also think it's okay to not have all the answers. You know, I really believe that, that our God, the one true God, is the God of truth. And so if you are seeking truth with all your heart, I think you're going to find God. That's interesting, because in, in the Bible, after Jesus rose again from the dead, he showed himself to his disciples like they were in a locked room and he showed up out of nowhere and he said, peace be with you. And they got to see the holes in his hands and the hole in his side. 
and then he disappeared. And all the disciples weren't there in that room with them. One of them, Thomas, was gone. And when they saw Thomas, they were like, Thomas, guess what happened? We saw Jesus. And, and they were, you know, they were telling him what happened. And, and Thomas said, unless I can put my finger in the holes in his hands and the hole in his side, I will never believe. And I think that this passage is super interesting because Jesus didn't show up right away. But eight days later, when they were in a locked room again, and they were all there this time, Jesus showed up again. And he let Thomas put his finger in the holes in his hands and in the hole in his side from the spear that pierced him. And Thomas believed. And I think it's interesting because Jesus didn't show up and he didn't say, how dare you not believe, Thomas? How dare you have questions? But what he did say was, did you believe because you've seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So yeah, Thomas did kind of make an ultimatum. He did say, unless I can do these things, I will never believe. And I think that that is wrong. I don't think that's the way we're supposed to do things. But but Jesus was kind to Thomas and, and he did show him the way that Thomas said he needed to be shown. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's us, right? I have not put my fingers into the, the holes in Jesus' hands. And I have a lot of questions, okay? I've got a lot of questions that I, I haven't been able to find the answer to. But nevertheless, I still believe. I still have faith. And I don't have faith because I have all the answers. That's kind of actually the opposite of what faith is. Faith is believing in something even if you can't see it. And I don't just have blind faith, right? Like, I believe in Jesus Christ even though I haven't seen him because I've seen so much of what he's done. So yeah, I've got questions, but I'm not going to let those questions come between me and God. I'm going to let those questions bring me closer to him. And that's my hope for you guys. I really hope that you will not be ashamed if you have questions, but instead that you would take those questions to God and be okay with the fact that you might not get an answer right away. You might not even get an answer until you're in heaven. But if you seek truth with all your heart, I know that you'll find it. And I know that you'll find God. Because our God, the one true God, is the God of truth. And if you have questions and you can find answers to those questions, awesome. That's great. You can help other people who have questions too. But I hope that you will never let unanswered questions come between you and God. It's totally okay to have questions. Let those questions draw you closer to him instead of pushing him away. So, Thomasina, what have you understood so far? that Jesus is cool with me asking questions. And what did you hear and understand from what Douglas had to say about having questions in the first place? Douglas says it's great to have questions. He says that for us to develop lasting faith, we must read the word of God and when we find places that we can't understand, that we must ask questions. That's right. Do you remember the verse he mentioned in the Bible? Yes, I remember because it made me feel so special. It was from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 29, which says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And Douglas said, Jesus was talking about us when he said, those who have not seen. That verse made me feel special too because I realized how blessed we are to believe in Jesus and to believe that he lived, died and rose again from death even though we have never seen him in human form.
Remember children, God knows our feelings. He understands when we have doubts. We can always trust God to help us when we doubt. You must make him your number one person when asking questions about everything because he created us. Not only that, God has placed many people in your life who you can ask questions from and get answers to those questions. It could be your parents, your children's church or Sunday school teacher, an older relative like your grandmom or granddad. And if none of those people are able to answer, you can even call the aunties and uncles at Kids Half Hour on the number that's given below and we will be happy to find the answer for you. It's almost time to end Kids Half Hour. Let's pray before we close, shall we, Thomasina? Can you please pray that I will be brave at the dentist? That I will not cry if I have to sit alone in the dentist chair without my ammi? Of course we can do that. So, join your hands and let's pray. Father God, we are grateful that you are our creator. We thank you for sending us your only son, Jesus, to become a human just like us, where people like Thomas, who have so many questions and look for evidence before they believe, can touch and see and decide to believe in you. Thank you for teaching us that you will answer the questions we ask you. Oh, and Father, please help Thomasina to be brave and not cry at the dentist's office. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bye everyone and please join us next week. Okay. What it says to me Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows Exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door.